What's up everybody, Joe Simons, Link Diamonds. We are back again, and I'm gonna talk a little bit quieter because we're here bright now. Ooh, ooh, look, just had an explosion. Oh, oh. it's missing it. Oh, Joe, hopefully you're oh, catching this. I got him. Nice. <laughs> oh, just got off, just got off. So we're fishing with the moonwalk. We got top water on. We even got a little Dr. Juice on the back of this top water lure. And we are fishing a mangrove point here. Sun's coming up, beautiful morning. And uh, we just got here. Oh, there we are. And got already him. had some nice explosions. All right, Luke is on already. A little snug. Nice yeah, little these snug. are little guys. That's why they weren't getting the hook set. The bigger ones never have a problem, but those small ones will oftentimes pop it out of the water and and miss half the time. But what a what a thrill! Feisty little fella. Well done. So the goal here today is power fishing in. We are going to try to catch a slam. Oh, jumped in the boat. Before we have to put our sunglasses on, which is uh, which is always a great goal when you start early here in the in the summertime. Uh, right we there. did it earlier this week. There's Lukey with a nice he little uh, snook if off. you're listening. And here's kind of the main tip. If you take one thing away from this is start early and look for the schools of mullet. Um, right here in this point, this is where we saw the mullet jumping. And I, I well, think, or just, or just flat out fish point. I didn't, we didn't see much of mullet, but just the fact this is a point. We have the current flow coming out of here. Like this is the, this is a textbook spot. This is a spot that it's a, it's a must fish whether you see mullet or not. Well, I'm seeing mullet jumping. I don't know about you. Well, I haven't seen any. I'm seeing snook hitting my plug. Oh, I don't know about you. Now. Oh <laughs> boy. I'm just getting big redfish blows. Um, <laughs> try real quick. Whoa. But yeah, so the power fishing. This is this is a really uh, a really powerful way to fish. Uh, as far as is just going out there and catching fish quickly. And that during the fall is really late summer, and all through the fall, this will oftentimes outfish live bait because the fish are a little bit more aggressive. Especially if you get out early like we are now, the fish are going to be aggressive, and it's really about just covering ground. So we're going to be moving fast. Uh, we're we're moving really fast down the shoreline. Got to this little cut. Saw a couple mullet jumping. Um, saw this current going around this this point right here, and this is a perfect ambush spot. Uh, so we slow down. We're going to slow down here and um, maybe pick a fish or two off, and then we're going to not waste any time. We're going to keep going. We're not we're not anchoring down. We probably won't even use the power pole today. Um, it's just going to be kind of just churning churning through water, and uh, there's some redfish schools starting to form, which they usually do in the fall. And so the goal is just to cover water and then uh, do all we can to try to come across some of these redfish schools. And guess who we passed on oh. the way here? Is that another one? Pull it out there. We passed all the live bait guys. <laughs> so we're pulling up and, uh, you know, sun's starting to come up and we're about to go to this little area here and we see four boats all together and guess what they're all doing? Throwing their cast net, trying to get that live bait. So we're already out here catching snooks. They're still trying to fill the live well up. Nothing yeah. gets live bait, but yeah, there are some Easier ways to do it. I think most of them were captains uh, yeah. going out there and getting bait before uh, they pick up their customers. But something nice to be said, because we did this earlier in the week for you insiders, you saw our report, uh, same type of area and same time of the morning, same tide, same lures. And we did, we caught an inshore slam, you know, before 7.30 in the morning. And I included, the, you know, we got onto the redfish schools because we, we covered ground and got them. And uh, we had multiple doubles on redfish, multiple topwater doubles, which is always a, always awesome. And, uh, so, I'm and so we're going to try to do our best to repeat that today. So now, so they just had a couple small hits on that point. Everything was small, so we're going to keep moving. And uh, now it's really about just looking for signs of life. Troll motor is staying on. Good thing about these topwater plugs, this Moonwalker, is you can bomb this thing out there. 10 pound braid, good seven, six rod. Even though I know some people like shorter rods for top water, it don't bother me. I'd rather sling it out there and cover ground. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, some more jumping muller. There's something over there. And when you're power fishing, as Luke said, it's all about covering ground and then slowing down once you get some strikes. And I might even switch over oh, to a paddle this guy. tail. Look at this, this is what not to do. This guy's not supposed tea. to, this is all idle zone. Yeah, guy's not, not supposed to be going there. fast. Let's see if we can. Oh, oh. all kinds of chaos. Nope. I, think I think I'm under you. 
Jeez, this guy's busted on camera. Flying yeah, it's, in a... It's best when everybody follows the rules. <laughs> Couple but feet of water over there. There's always gonna be some people like that. All right, so we're just gonna charge across here. Let this guy go behind us. So that happens. So you can film him real quick. He's so we can at least give this guy a hard time. <laughs> He's going right where we were fishing, flying through there in an idle zone and hitting our mangrove line. Yeah, it's just important to follow those rules. That they're there for the reason, obviously. In this case, there's two reasons for those. It's grass lasts um, and, the, and manatees, you know, both of which are obviously important. Um, particularly grass flats here, this is a lot of shallow water. And uh, just running a boat like that is just not very responsible. So make sure to follow, follow the rules. They're there for a reason. Yep. Sadly, it's not the first person this week we've seen do that. And when you're going by, I mean, nothing should tick us off as inshore anglers. It's precious. It's like gold to have nice seagrass and you see these people and you see the prop scars and doggone, you're like, guys, slow down. And you probably would have seen that. Remember Luke, we're fishing that one area in that one boat, the guy's oblivious. And uh, he's literally like stuck. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, I think, I think we might've hit yeah. bottom. Like, you think? Yeah, I think <laughs> we're about to hit bottom and their boat's already stuck and <laughs> mud's flying oh, up. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, and like, and we could have, I mean, we could have thrown a, a sandwich to him. They were so close. <laughs> and we're fishing. Yeah. It's like, come on. It drives me nuts. Yeah, it's an unfortunate so, thing, but uh, all we can do is try to educate and spread the word. Yep. We do have some nice grass. It's only a couple feet deep here. I don't know if you can see the water here, Joel, this early in the morning. So, so we're not seeing any mullet yet. Yeah, usually when it's this shallow, you should see some signs of mullet. Even, I mean, we got lucky last time and actually could see wakes from uh, the schools of both mullet and redfish. So a lot of it's just using your eyes and using your rod to cover some ground. And this is a good example of every day is different. So I was actually here yesterday and there were mullet and fish everywhere <laughs> and not the case today. So we're going to have to find them. Yep. That's well, what some over there. about. Yeah, I just heard something. You know, see the little wake pushing? Yeah. So yeah, the key is just to keep the eyes open and just look for any anomaly. That could be a little shark or something, but maybe even a dolphin too. So look for any anomaly. And uh, I get the question a lot of, okay, I'm, you start with top water early, early morning, when to switch? So some people, there's a lot of different rules out there. There's never like a one size fits all. I usually switch uh, and when it stops working. <laughs> Sometimes it'll keep working until 10 o'clock. Uh, most of the time it'll stop working around when the sun comes up. Uh, sometimes it'll stop working before the sun comes up. If you just see them just follow and not commit, that's when I, I make the switch. Um, or at least have one person in your boat yeah. switch. Uh, that's a, Yeah, that's the smartest thing. That's it's usually actually, the best way to do it. It's generally best to have one person top water and the other subsurface because a lot of cases like over there at that point, you know, we, when those fish were missing, yeah, that's something really big. When those fish, that might just be a manatee, but when those fish were missing, um, something with sure. subsurface would have would have probably gotten the, the job done much quicker and we had to waste a few casts. Yeah, that's something really big moving. It looks like a manatee, but we'll still we'll still go check it out. I would be surprised if that's a school of redfish moving that fast, but you never know. Ooh, I got it close to him. Let's see if yeah, it's looking like a manatee wake. Yeah, see those. Yeah, it's a manatee, but a lot of times redfish will follow those. So I do like to still yeah, make sure that it's, you know, make sure you don't snag the thing, obviously. We'll go up there, cast a little close to it. You snag it on top water, that's an yeah. inline hook. Yeah, just don't do it with like a subsurface twitch bait <laughs> with trebles. Yeah, it's definitely manatee and he's booking it. Right. Oh, something just hit me. Right behind the manatee? Well, that was too far behind, I, don't, I wasn't right, it was just sitting out there. Okay. Yep, there's a man. He just or just came up, took took a breath. Like a good brother, I will cast right behind you. It was just that was probably a trout. It will take it. Yeah, trout has actually been the hardest thing to get lately. Yeah, and so we're if you're listening, we're in Tampa, or should I say, Champa Bay? Go Brady. And um, you know we just had a. 
pretty horrific red tide, algae bloom. And uh, this whole, whole area, I mean, not that long ago, I mean, a month ago was, I mean, just devastated. And uh, it is sad, but it's also a little bit, I guess, uplifting to see it recovered. Uh, not fully recovered, but at least to know that Mother Nature heals. Um, we have a lot of work to do as citizens, anglers, lovers of uh, the outdoors and the water. But doggone, and I, I mean, our, our biggest fear was this area was just gonna have no fish forever. And at least there's some fish out here, but it is interesting about the trout, right, Luke? Yeah. It used to be the easiest thing to catch. Yeah, it went from the easiest to the toughest. All right, so this, I've seen a couple, of, I couldn't tell if it's mullet or redfish or whatever, but kind of close to this point. So oh, look at that, that's a wake behind my bait. So there's some redfish around. If you can zoom in there, Joel. Um, so again, I'm moving really fast and started seeing a little bit of, a little bit of anomaly on the surface and then slowed down oh. as soon as I got in the casting range. And uh, that's just a smart way to just increase the odds. You obviously you don't want to go blast through an area that has a bunch of fish. So this one, okay, see there's a bunch of mullet just spooked way up there. This is looking good. So we're just gonna keep, motor's still on, but it's just going much slower than before. And uh, we should get a hit in here these next five minutes. All right, Luke's hitting that point. Always hit the points. And I made a oh, there we horrible are. cast. There we are. <laughs> that snook is not playing around. He does not like having the moonwalker in his face. What do you know? A point again. Yeah, right where a point that also had some action. Um, that is, actually this is, a, this is a nice, is that a trout? Yeah, this is a nice trout. Do you see the thing jumping like a snook? Oh, well, that was crazy. This is, that's really cool. All right, so we just got the, the most difficult of the slam. Oh, it just got off quick. Well, anyway, we're gonna let him go. That was really cool. Did you see that thing jumping? That was Hopefully insane. Got caught on camera. That was insane. I would have sworn that was a snook. That it's, trout went completely airborne. Yeah, it's rare that trout jump like that. Oh, and I just uh, hooked a rod back there. Oh. <laughs> this is, a, you know, we did this live. So you see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, hey, can you move your line I too? It. I got it. Yeah, you're caught in my line. Yeah. Good. Well, this is what really happens. Yeah. You're fishing with the Simons brothers. Every once in a while you catch a rod or two, you know? It's like if you don't catch the mangroves every once in a while, you're not casting close enough. And if you don't hook a rod every so often, you're not casting in enough, enough, so. It, it doesn't make yeah. any sense, actually. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. Yes. Yeah, Learn something new every day, Joe. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, since Joe didn't, didn't notice it, there was a bunch of mullet out there. And so this should be, hopefully catch number two. I'm still gonna hit this point actually, again. Three, I should say. I can't believe that was a trout. I would have sworn that was a snook. Ooh, do you guys hear right, that? Yeah, so we have some mole activity. So now, yes. okay, now we're in the zone. This is totally different area than where they were yesterday and even the day before. And but, that's uh, another reason you can't just keep going back to the same old boring spots over and over and over and over again. We've seen little, uh, little was this little fry bait or yep. if with some little dimples in the water. This is all the kind of stuff that you want to see. And had, I mean, we had a killer day, um, you know, back there earlier this week. And had we done what we used to always do and what most anglers do, just, hey, let's go sit at the same old spot and anchor down, we would have been in the dead zone. And if you're anything like us, I'm going to be in the 9010 zone. If you don't, oh, I just hooked a leaf. You don't know what that is, mullet jumping over there. 90% of all feeding fish are in 10% of any area at any given time. And the zone moves is the bad news. Yeah, fish have tails, they're gonna move. Tails and no fences, we always say. Yep. And we have a lot of activity. We should be getting our redfish here. So hopefully, I don't know if we can count that trout as a catch or not, but at least we, yeah. we had one hooked. We'll at least have a hook slam before the sun comes up, which would be cool. So mm. there's a bunch of mullet all around here. And, uh, and lately, again, this is the time of the year where those, those redfish are, are in many cases cruising around with the mullet. Oh, oh there, there we are. are. There you are. That looks like a snake. Ah. But the redfish are cruising around with the mullet 
And uh, so it's just been really, really helpful to just get out here, you know, get out here early and ideally have a calm day like this where you can see everything. This has been, this is like perfect conditions. Um, so that was a little snook I just had on. Even though they're not where we thought they'd be, we eventually- They're kind of right out here in the middle. I don't know, Joel, can you zoom in over here and just look at all these little dimples? Yeah, basically, in, yeah, directly in front of the boat, there's some, I'll cast over them here in a second. So like right up there, the little tail sticking up. Those are those aren't redfish. Those are those are mullet. But uh, a lot of times those redfish will. Uh, I didn't have the best cast there, but a lot of times those redfish will be hanging there with them. I'll be there. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I got something. Follow me. Yep. I'm gonna go over there where all that commotion is. This area looks good. Bombs away, Moonwalker. See if you can't get a strike. There's just something so cool about having a redfish follow up yeah. your top water and just come up and crush it. Yeah, they'll like submarine behind it. It's especially up in this shallow water. We're in, we're only like in a foot and a half of water. This is shallow stuff. So they can't really get up, get down under and shoot up. They basically have to come up from behind, they submarine. And I just slurped that thing down. It's awesome. So some of you might be wondering, hey, if you're watching, why aren't you guys in the Pathfinder? Why are you in the Maverick? Answer, Luke? Oh, just because uh, this is a long distance from where the Pathfinder is. <laughs> and uh, this is, it's actually, it's easier to do this type of fishing with a smaller boat. Ooh, that's a, that looked like a tail and fish there. All right, this that looks like the School of Reds. All right, so um, yeah, Joel, make sure you get a, can you see you up there ahead of us? Hopefully, we can get a, a topwater hit on a topwater strike on camera. But uh, this smaller boat is just it's quieter up in the shallows, so we can move oh, we can move fast. I just had something follow me all the way up here. We can move fast without uh, without spooking fish. This one should get slurped down by a redfish. Joe cast to the right, and hopefully, we'll see if we can double up. If that's reds, all right, watch out there, Joe. I don't want to hook you. If that's reds, we're going to be in really good shape. Um, yeah, this boat is just quieter. You can move faster. More, oh, ooh, look yeah, at look that. At that. You that's see a, that wake? That's a nice fish. You guys There's see that wake? There's a bunch of them. There nice. Go. There All right, go. dang it. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can you see that wake, Joel? Oh, that is awesome. baby. All right, let's see if we can get it. Dude, that's a nice one. Let's see if we can get one of his friends. He's coming right at that us. That was cool. That was so cool. That, uh, man, it just gets my heart pumping every time you see that. And I've done it so many okay, times. They're, they're way over there. Oh, look right there, look, Joel, do you see him? Look, th th that's the school of them. Now he's found his buddies. Let's see if we can get one of, theirs, one of his friends. But so many times you see that wake and you get excited and you either go too fast or you completely pause. And I learned my lesson that one time we were fishing with our buddy down and uh, he was pulling us. He was so mad at me. He's like, why did you stop? Why did you freeze? And I've done the other, that's a solid red. I've done the other worst sin is when you just jerk it as soon as you see any kind of commotion. And that's not natural. I mean, for a bait fish to just do that. And a lot of times, and they're lazy in general, they don't want to work that hard. That's over slot red there. Yeah, it's a beautiful red. Um, it's just so important when you see that wake, you just take it slow. Almost close your eyes and don't do anything until you feel some tension. So this is on the Moonwalker, if you guys are listening, the old top water plug that we came yeah. out with and pretty cool. That is officially how you go out and hook a slam and I don't know how long it's been, probably 20 minutes or so. Yeah, if only you had landed that, uh, it's a nice, Ooh, nice there's a nice fish. wake right here. I'm gonna come around here and get him. Look at that, mm -hmm. hooked perfectly. Oh, what the front hook, look at that in the side of the mouth. Heck yeah. Get the leader so it's officially a catch. Oh, look at those two beautiful spots there. Look at that. Oh man, what a great looking fish. Get a, get the hook out. So we're using these single inline hooks. One of the few, oh, of course I don't have my pliers on me now. Um, one of the few topwater plugs that's coming standard with these. Yeah, and you can show, I can, I'll show you a close up of this one. This is, that's the earlier version. Here's the, uh, the latest version. 
So we're having bigger hooks. We found some really good hooks, either top of the line hooks. We have a Slam Shady paint job on there. And this thing has been awesome. This thing is off, this has been through a lot of abuse. The paint's starting to wear off. I've been using this for really a couple weeks now. And these hooks have been shockingly effective. Oh, and uh, so this is by far my favorite top water plug. And uh, this is, so this is version two. Some of you guys have version one out there. Nobody has this, this is actually the only one we have. So I'm doing my best not to lose it. But, uh, but these things are awesome. They have good walk the dog action and uh, they, they really are good. And they definitely stick in fish's mouth. There we go. Finally got that thing out. We'll get a quick little pick and get him released. All right. It's a solid fish. Yeah, buddy. Oh man, we are close to having double there too. All right, we'll get him released. Woo! And he's off to the races. Yeah, those things are, those things oh. are tough. So they, I saw right. that school. I thought they were, uh, I misjudged where they were and I led Joe to that one. Oh man, that burns me up. I was planning on doing it right in his face, but he, uh, he Always showed me Always go to the right of the school of red when you see moving. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. I just had something followed up right here. Let's see if it eats. All right. Come on, eat it. That was fun. But for those of you that- oh. <laughs> So good brother, uh, we'll go right out there again. Oh, I'm about to hook a weed there. Yeah, another benefit of these inline hooks, a really big benefit is, is the fact that they're weedless. Like I just went through a huge clump of weeds and I only picked up one little one and usually can shake them off. Uh, those trebles, right? It's, you know, three times the, the risk of getting, getting weeds I, on your line. Yeah, I still don't get it. And we've all had it. It gets stuck in your shirt and your fingers. I mean, if you look on, go to Google and do hooked fisherman or hook in hand, hook in ear, and like 95% of the pictures are with treble hooks. And you just saw there for the big fish, it, I would rather have this. It's more pressure on one point than having multiple. And it just, it destroys the fish, even though that was longer than I would have liked to get a hook out. I mean, these things work amazingly well. You saw how it was only hooked in one spot and it still took a while. But if you have trouble hooks, I mean, part of it's in its face, part of it's in its mouth. You gotta, you must have pliers in those instances. And uh, I think it's just, God, it drives me crazy seeing the damage a treble hook causes to everybody. And when you got a dog like Otis on the boat, not even a chance you want to have treble hooks. Yeah, even just kids. I mean, it's just, they're just, you know, it's just not worth the risk. When you transport them, if you leave, oh, oh. Look, at, look at that, wake. Yeah, oh, look at that, that's a red there. That's, that school is maybe back there. Definitely, they're definitely in the area. A lot of times when you get one out of a school, they don't go too far, but they're totally spooked. So you won't catch them for a while. If there's a bigger school, then you can, oh, look at that wake right there. If there's a bigger school, then you can, in, in most cases, double up. Like in that case, um, I guess earlier this week, we got on a much bigger school and it was so much easier to double up because half the school will spook and the other half is just thinks that the fish are feeding and they'll come up and smack whatever comes near them. Yep. But uh, that, was a, that was a smaller school. It looked like the, based on the wakes, there's probably maybe 15 fish in there. And they were, uh, once that one was hooked, they all were freaking out. All it takes is one. Oh, I love it. But yeah, for this, I mean, we're filming this now here. Technically, it's end of summer, early fall, but come fall, you know, we're talking October, it's getting, in November, I mean, when it's just getting a little bit cooler, there is nothing better than that topwater bite. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get oh, a good, uh, we got a point here, so high probability spot. We'll try to get one on film. So I'm going to cast right down that shoreline. I'll go to the right this time and give and, a chance. Uh, Let's see if we can get one. Let's make sure I don't hook any bitey or any rods. So burn that shoreline. Oh, like oh, I just spooked something too on that on the cast. We're gonna go right next to those trees. Oh, <laughs> right where it's supposed to be. Oh, missed it. Eat it. Eat it. So that's a super high probability spot. I would have been more surprised if I didn't get a strike than I did. In that case, it was just some small snook. They missed it. And another good thing about these inline hooks is that the smaller fish do miss it. Um, especially like ladyfish, that's where it really comes in handy. Yeah. I've had so many times where a little small stuff are messing with it. Oh. And then, uh, and then a bigger fish will see the commotion and then come up and steal the meal. And, uh, and that has caught, helped me catch, basically help my average catch size increase. I'll do that. So Joe just took a turn through there. So we'll do one more. I made a horrible cast. Oh, I just, just made like a bad one. and had to yeah. stop so, mine early. Yeah, always uh, be quick to the trigger to stop your cast. So I had a bad cast there. It was going 
too far over. It was going to be in the trees. And uh, I just have always keep my hand really close to it and just literally stop the line from going out. Um, so that way I'm not stuck in the trees. There we are. That one's gonna, that one should, should get something. So now hopefully we can get on camera better. Oh, oh did you see that? Zoom in oh, on that. There we are. Got him. Got him. Uh oh, this mic. Can't tell what it is. Let's see. Yeah, so that's, whoa, there we are. That's a snook. Snook again. Snook. But just the, uh, the power of just finding the trend, right? So this, oh, a nicer fish. So this has been the trend lately is to get, to find some, some food and to fish the points. You know, obviously the, the trend changes throughout the year. That's what, that's part of our, our insider club is we, we just make sure that everybody's dialed on the trends. I've been preaching this trend for the last, really last month. Um, and we probably have a little bit more longer to go with it, but uh, pretty cool. Really tough to beat. It's tough to beat a topwater strike. I will yeah. never, ever get tired of hearing a fish of any kind pop a lure. So not a giant snook, but a solid one. Respectable, he fought like he was a lot bigger than he was. Yeah, fun little morning here. I mean, all still seven something o'clock. Here, I'll get a quick little pick for you there, Luke. Over there is, look at that, uh, the eye. <laughs> I've caught a ton of fish. The eye on one side is coming out. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. Nice little backcountry snook. Let's get this joker off. It's when you know you've uh, put some time in on a topwater uh, his, prototype when the eyes are popping out. He's, uh, he's winking at us. <laughs> the fish don't care. Oh, it's like more, more of an injured fish. Yeah, and a unique thing we have on this is the backside. So the, all the fish really see they're following it, so they see the backside. So we put some a couple of teeth marks on there. And uh, just to, again, just to, to make sure that they, they can see as much as possible that it's an injured bait fish. Oh, look, something's oh, popping yeah, on. Yeah, you're following it. And that's gotten the job done. And so when you're a spot like this, there's probably some more fish. There's definitely some more fish Joe just had to follow. So just go one at a time. So I'm gonna let him take us through there. You don't wanna have too much commotion. If you have like three people in the boat and you all three cast in one spot, it's just like, it's just overload, right? You don't wanna, you don't wanna totally overload the fish. So we're gonna get a little strike uh, cast out of there. there. To the side. See if there's anything over here on this side. See if I can steal Joe's fish that he just missed. It's a small one. You can you can have them. Oh, that'd be fun. The other one that's been really interesting here on uh, the flats, we're still once again in a couple feet of water, has been jacks. So much fun to catch jacks on top water. Yep. As much as I'd rather have a redfish, there is something fun about having those jacks. They hit so hard, they fight so hard. What's that dude over there getting bait? Yeah, I guess another mullet guy back there. We we'll get some mullet guys. Come on, baby. Oh, there's something just so cool about the sun coming up here and seeing that top water. I hope the camera picked up the wake of that redfish. Yeah, that's oh, uh, that's man. tough to beat. Those those reds when they get fired up and so hit top cool. water. That's that's the ultimate. So cool. All of them are awesome, but the redfish probably takes the cake just because they're not designed to do it. They, uh, they're not very efficient, so they have to really get after it. So they, have I'm, to, they have to be totally sold. I wonder why I'm not casting. I'm just sitting here waiting. We're going around a, a bend here, if you're listening. We're going around a, a mangrove point. Luke is going to go for it. Oh! oh. So here's another great reason about not having trouble hooks. Luke just cast, beautiful cast, but his line just caught the end of a tree branch. So we'll do a little... Little hoorah and one Look at little that. whammy kablammy. So, yeah. Whereas treble hooks, that probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, you can get a lot more aggressive in your casting. Yep. Ooh, man, big wake right there. So Luke just took that's, it. That's a school of fish, too. Let's see if they can turn. Ooh. Oh, I'm on. Oh, they missed it. So oh. we got a school of fish heading out. They, they didn't. I got the sun in my face, but that was. Golly. That was awesome. Right, let's see if I can get ahead of that school. Well, I'm at, I missed the... All right, we're definitely ahead of them now, as long as I don't spook them. A good, a good thing about these top waters is they launch. I'm gonna go back after whatever just hit my... Throw a... Go on this side. Ooh, I'm going right over them. Yeah, they're spooked off. Dang, those are reds too. Man, that was, that was only like five or six oh. fish. That was behind mine again. You see? Oh yeah, heck yeah. That's probably red there, it's following. 
So this is the time when you start seeing this, that now we've got to think, okay, we, we're probably better off going away from top water and going subsurface. If we see a couple more follows without a strike, um, we're going to switch over to the bomber. And, and what the bomber is, oh it's, boy, it's a paddle I'm tail. The, same as you look good. the bomber is a paddle tail that's about the same size, uh, but it's subsurface. So it's, it's under the water. Look at this. It's going to go right next to that mangrove tree. That, that should get hammered. But the bomber subsurface, it's the same profile, right? We've already figured out that these fish are dialed into this profile, to this size. And, uh, but the bomber, it'll, just, it'll be under the water so they can, they can much more easily grab it. Oh, of course you say that. And, uh, that, was a, that was a little small guy. Oh, he's still falling it. <laughs> that was like a 12 incher. Um, so yeah, we, if I see a couple more follows, I'm gonna be quick to switch. I'm hoping to get a slam on top water is why I haven't switched yet. The fact that it's so calm, the subsurface is usually the, the way to go once that sun comes up. The this sun is, is a... As soon as I start feeling the need to put sunglasses on is when I usually make the switch. What's, what's why it's a little hand trick? Oh, yeah. oh, I think you're on. Oh, no, it sucked it down. Oh, it had it on. You see that, Joel? Oh, this thing is just all <laughs> over it. And I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm still retrieving. Yeah, don't freak out. He's still behind it. So I'm gonna let Joe do his, do his thing and I'm gonna go steal his fish is what's gonna happen here. He finally gave up on it. So I'm casting right down that same lane. And it, it's already proven that it's willing to come up and smack a topwater plug. Oh, I think I have a weed on it. Dang it, it doesn't feel right. Oh, and I will go back. Yeah, I got a little weed on there. It's not going to help my chances. Sometimes they'll still hit it with the weed, but it's, ah. Uh, even with the inlines, it's not perfectly weedless. Yeah, but the bigger fish, usually not going to hit it with a weed on it. So we had Peter Deeks on talking about catching trophy fish. The big ones, they know. There's a reason they're big. They've seen it all. They, they look a little bit closer. They're just like a old wise parents who's fallen for the tricks before. All the fish aren't as smart as we give them credit for. Those big ones are smarter than the small ones, which will sometimes when they're in a feeding frenzy will hit anything, including a Lego. Is that one video demonstrated? All right, this is my last cast with top water. Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing we're, we're spooking off fish that I know we casted near. And now uh, we're having some follows without strikes. I'm, oh, oh having a of course you say uh, that. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll go a little bit longer without it. Because <laughs> we'll it sure is fun. Eat it, eat it. Oh, look at Joe stealing that fish. Unbelievable. Oh man, almost did it right in your face. If you steal that from me. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> it's a small one. If it was a big one, I would have known it. Yeah, sure you would. Yeah, that was a... Uh, We'll have to do one. We can't do last cast with a strike like that. But yeah, again, if the smarter play actually would be to go subsurface because that snook is active, it's showing where it is. And uh, if we were really trying to maximize our catch, then one of us would have a, a, a bomber and then just throw that bomber through there and it'll, that's almost like guaranteed to get smacked. Yep. And the hookup ratio is so much better with subsurface. There's, there's you know, although there's only one hook point, you know, it's, it's just the hook and soft plastic. And, uh, Go ahead and make the switch. Cool. Well, guys, I think we're going to end it here while we uh, switch over. Might even do a separate uh, podcast if you'd like to see that. Let us know uh, worst or best case scenario, I guess, really. There's the old Dr. Juice. Yeah, so we've got to end with it a very important note. Is this? I've never been a scent guy at all. And we put it on our topwater plugs, yeah, too. Yeah, I literally put it on everything. And this is oil-based, so it, it's a liquid form, but it's oil-based so that it sticks to topwater plugs. I've had it on there. I've seen my catch rate go up. I've done some tests with it and it like literally does, it does shockingly well for, for inshore. So it's redfish, sea trout, snook uh, in particular, but less is more, right? This is a little dropper and just kind of just drip it down the side and then just use my hand and, and rub it on in and then get do it when it's dry. And this oil base, it will, it'll stick on there. It doesn't mix with water. So I just do this and it's ready to rock. And I put some on my knots, like everywhere where my hand is touched um, that is a good way to just help increase your strikes. And it is, I, I'm like totally sold on it. Again, I was, I was a significant skeptic uh, when that we were even talking about starting. I was like, yeah, we're never going to put our name on it. 
unless the stuff's legit. And uh, man, I've been I've been super happy. Yep, and it goes on hard baits. Anything that you want to be supercharged, it has proven to work. And it outperforms Procure, it stays on a whole lot longer. The whole Procure thing is more of a, a marketing deal. And the, and the fact that Procure works, I'm not trying to poop on the company. We, we like Procure and even sell it in our store. But the, the marketing part is they made it stick because fishermen, you know, they like to see stuff. The same as some of these realistic lures. But in reality, the Procure stuff is water-based where this is more oil-based. And the water-based stuff, what that means is you probably notice after you fish with Procure for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, it's gone. You can't see it anymore. It's physically gone where this stuff, it's sticking on there long-term. And if you don't believe me, uh, put a little bit on your pants and, and ask your spouse if they can smell it the next day. Uh, it is potent and it stays on everything. We even have some tips on, if you do happen to spill a little bit on your boat or your kayak, how to get it off uh, pretty quickly with some, uh, some Dawn. But uh, definitely pick up some Dr. Juice if you can. We sell out of it almost every time that we, uh, that we put it in the store. But that's it. We're, uh, we're going to go hit this uh, next shoreline with some subsurface. And we'll be doing an insider report for you guys on that. And I'm going to go find my sunglasses and some pliers. Uh, it looks like a little storm might be brewing up there as, uh, as well. Yep. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to see exactly you know, where we are, where we fish, and, and more importantly, the trends, because that's really you know why this insider club is so powerful is you know we're out in the water every single week we have coaches on the water every single week all over the place from texas and, and now up into georgia and we're reporting what we're seeing real time where we're at where the bays it's like having a fishing guy in your back pocket so come join us there it's saltstore.com insider club we have twenty five thousand members just celebrated that and our took our goal is twofold is to save you time by putting you in the 9010 zone and saving you money by not only going out and testing tackle coming up with tackle that we know works the stuff that we wish was around when when you know we were out there buying buying our own tackle and spending crazy amounts of money which we still do but we want to, one, test stuff out, tell you what works, and then give you big discounts on it and help you save even more money. So that's all at saltstrom.com. Join us in the Insider Club. It, uh, what do we have, a 365-day money-back guarantee? Yeah, it's that's as sound, long as the membership. Crazy. So yeah. it's an annual membership. And just to put all the risk on us, to just to, we know it works. So you have nothing to lose. You have a lifetime of fish catching to gain. Uh, try it out. Join for the year. And again, if even on day 364, if you somehow don't think that it's the best investment in fishing you've ever had, just let us know and we'll give you a refund. No questions asked. Um, it, we know it works, so just highly recommend just, just trying it. Yep, and, and it's you have nothing to lose. And it's for anyone, whether you're in a boat, skiff, kayak, paddleboard, shore, pier, jetty. It's funny. There's uh, someone who put something in a Facebook group. Hey, what do you think about Salt Strong Club? And this one guy who's never been a member, by the way, he was like, Oh, I'm, I know all that stuff they're teaching. I, hey, you, and then an uh, actual fishing guide who's one of our members. Like we have full time fishing guides who are members. Like man, I'm learning stuff in there every single month, and I'm on the water almost every single day and you're just some weekend warrior that is probably not as consistent as you want. So it is for everyone, but we want positive people. We want people who are uplifting and, and helpful and, and sharing. And that's what makes our community so different, our private online community than anything else out there. I mean, you just got amazing people who want to share, who want to see you succeed and help you create more memories out in the water. So it's all at saltshore.com. We appreciate it, guys. We'll have more of this on the water stuff to come and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. We out. See ya.